let's talk about my fall sewing plans or ideas or suggestions. Yeah, let's do that. Hi, my name is Sarah and welcome to my channel, which is all about sewing and styling a handmade wardrobe. I have some very loose plans for fall sewing. I haven't been doing a lot of sewing lately and so I don't know how many of these things I will actually make, but I thought I would share with you some ideas for patterns and fabrics that I would like to sew up for this fall. And let's just start with the three things that I know I will definitely be making for these first three projects that I'm sharing with you, they are Minerva brand ambassador projects, which means that I received the fabrics for free in exchange for making something and then writing it up on their website. The first one that I'm planning to make is Simplicity 8554. This is for a light unlined trench coat. I requested this fabric because I wanted to make a trench coat that would be really good for transitional seasons. Something that's just a nice light layer that you can wear when it's a little bit chilly outside, but maybe you don't need a full on coat. Now we are already headed into full fall season, so I don't know how much wear this is going to get this fall, but I know that it'll be a staple in my closet for years to come for those in between times for spring and fall. So I'm really excited about adding this to my closet. The pattern comes in two packets from sizes six to 14 and 14 to 22. And the fabric that I requested is the Minerva Core Range Stretch Woven Linen Viscose Fabric in this gray color. To me, the fabric actually doesn't have a ton of stretch, maybe just a little bit of give, and I think that it will make a really nice lightweight layer. It's kind of a medium weight fabric, and it has beautiful drape, so I think that it'll work really well as this unlined trench. And this cool gray tone, I think, will work really well in my workwear wardrobe. For the next two projects, I just requested these fabrics and so they have not arrived yet, but I will put in pictures from the Minerva website so you can see what they look like. I'd been wanting to make a couple of button up blouses because I am back in the office now four days a week and I feel like my workwear wardrobe could just use a refresh. The first one is the Vicky Sews Jenna blouse. It comes in European sizes 34 to 52 and four height ranges from 154 up to 184 centimeters tall. Full disclosure, I did receive this pattern for free when I was a Vicky Sews brand ambassador, but that partnership has ended and so I don't have any affiliate codes or anything for them anymore. The fabric that I requested is the Minerva Core Range Luxury Viscose Satin Fabric in this absolutely beautiful wine color. I've been seeing a lot of examples of these really silky flowy blouses and I just wanted to add one to my closet because it's very easy to dress it up if I have a meeting, but it's also really easy to wear casually with jeans. And I know that red is very on trend this season. It's my favorite color, so for me, it's always on trend, but I really do love the color. And I'm excited to make up this blouse, although to be honest, I'm a little bit nervous about working with the satin fabric because I think I've only used satin maybe once or twice before, and it was really kind of a nightmare. But we'll just have to see what it's like when it gets here. The second shirt that I wanna make is another Helen's Closet Cameron shirt. This comes in US sizes zero to 34. And the fabric that I'm going to use is the Minerva Core Range 100% cotton poplin fabric in this really beautiful narrow white and purple stripe. I do love a striped shirt. I have a couple in my closet already, but nothing with this sort of really narrow stripe pattern. And just having that super classic button up shirt, again, I think is perfect for work wear, but I can also wear it more casually at home. And I really like this purple color and I've been wanting to add more purple to my closet. I have sewn the camera button up twice before, including once fairly recently, so I was able to resize the pattern to get it to fit me really well. So I'm excited to make another one, although I might change my mind last minute and try a new pattern because I do tend to like to do that, but who knows, we'll just see what happens, but I definitely wanna make it a slightly oversized button up shirt. Now from here on out, the rest of these, I would not really classify them as plans, but just more ideas. If I have the time, if I have the energy, then I will make these things up. And if I don't, it's not a big deal. So another thing I've been thinking a lot about adding to my closet is some tailored trousers. They're just everywhere right now. They're very popular. And although they seem kind of dressy workwear to me, I've seen so many people style them in a casual way with sneakers and t-shirts or sweatshirts or hoodies even. And I just really like that look. And I've tried a couple of pleated pants patterns before, but they just haven't quite been what I'm looking for. So I wanted to try a new to me pattern, which is Grasser number 700 trousers. This comes in Russian sizes 38 to 52, and they have five height ranges from 152 up to 182 centimeters. 
Now this pattern, I actually ended up winning it for free in a giveaway. I guess they have some sort of program where if you share their posts in your stories, then you get entered into some sort of drawing. And apparently I won and I didn't even know that they were doing a giveaway, but that was really very kind of them. So I ended up getting a $30 gift certificate to their shop and I downloaded several patterns, but this is the one I'm most excited about making. And the really cool thing about these particular trousers is that they have a half lining. So they are lined to the knees. Now for this particular pair, I'll probably do my first pair unlined. And then if I like the style of the pattern and want to make more, then I could potentially do the lining in the future because I do have quite a few wool suiting fabrics that might be appropriate. But for my first time out, I don't want to start off right away using wool. So the fabric that I want to use is this fabric that I got from StyleMaker a couple of years ago. This is a Tencel twill fabric. It has beautiful drape. It has a nice weight to it. The only thing that might not work out perfectly is I don't think I have quite enough yardage because I think it calls for more than what I have. I have two yards here. However, I am really short and I always have to shorten my pant legs. And so it's possible I might be able to squeeze it out. I'll just have to see. And if I can't, then I'll use a different fabric. But I would really like to find a pleated trouser pattern that works for me. And hopefully this is the one. Now, the next thing I'm thinking about making is a knit cord set. So kind of in the spring and summer, but also extending into the fall, I've seen a lot of sets where you have like a t-shirt or a sweater and then like a very slim fitting knit skirt. Usually it's maxi length or sometimes midi with a slit. And I really like the idea of doing a matching set because they could wear the pieces on their own, but when you wear them together, it looks like a faux dress. So I am not 100% decided on the fabrics yet, but what I've been thinking about is doing a Victory Patterns Francis t-shirt. And that comes in US sizes zero to 18. This is a TNT pattern for me. I've made it many times. It's a very, very fitted shirt and there's different length options, different sleeves and different necklines. I would probably do like the high crew neck and then do kind of a cropped length. Now the crop on the Victory is really, really cropped. So it's a little bit too short for me. So if I go with this pattern, I would definitely add a couple of inches onto that cropped length, but I still want it to be fairly short. And then I'm thinking about doing the nice fitted long sleeves. And then to pair with that, I'm looking at possibly getting the Pattern Emporium Slay All Day skirt. It comes in Australian sizes four to 30. Now I don't own this pattern yet and I do already have some knit skirt patterns in my stash. So I need to think really hard whether I need to purchase this pattern. But the thing that I like about it, like with all Pattern Emporium patterns is that it has a ton of different options. So you have different length options, you have different waistband options. And you have a variety of options in terms of where you put the slit. So you can put them on the sides, you can put it in the front or the back, or you can kind of put it off to the side of the leg. And I do like the idea of playing around with all those different options. But as I said, I do already have some knit skirt patterns. So maybe I should just stick to one of those. I haven't made up my mind yet. Now for fabric, I do have two colors of the exact same type of fabric that I'm kind of trying to, to decide between. They are both a bamboo rib knit. This one I got from Blackbird Fabrics and I have two meters of this. And this one I got from fabric.com and I have two yards of this. Now the issue with this either way is like with the gray trouser fabric, I'm not sure that I have enough to do a full t-shirt and skirt. I will have to play around with it and see what I can come up with. But if I can squeeze it out, I think that either of these would make a really nice cord set. And I really do like the idea of being able to wear them as separates because especially the t-shirt, I could see myself wearing it all the time as a base layer, but I also think that I could wear the skirt on its own as well. And it should also be a relatively simple sew. Now the next couple of things on my list are coats. And I honestly can't say if I have the energy to make a coat this winter. I'm hoping that I do. This fabric I purchased, I think, very early this year, like in January from Minerva. And I bought it before I got my colors done. And then after I got my colors done, I realized that beige or camel is supposed to be one of the worst colors for me. So I put it aside for a long time and I was trying to figure out if I should just sell the fabric, but I've had time to sit on the whole colors and body typing thing. And essentially what I've concluded is that I don't really care. I like having warm neutrals as a contrast to the other colors that I wear in my wardrobe. And so it's probably unlikely that I would ever wear head to toe beige. 
but I think having it as an accent is perfectly fine for me. And so I think I'm gonna just eventually go ahead and make this coat and wear it and love it. And if it's not a color that suits me perfectly, then I'm okay with that. So the pattern that I bought to make this coat is Simplicity 9685. It comes in sizes four to 12 and then 12 to 20. And there's also a plus size pattern that goes with that. It's Simplicity 9686. And that one comes in sizes 20 to 28 and then 30 to 38. The fabric that I bought from Minerva is Minerva Boiled Wool Viscose Blend Coating Fabric in Camel. And then I also bought a Minerva Viscose Acetate Satin Twill Fabric, which I'm not gonna show you the lining because it's lining fabric that matches and it's not that exciting. But this is the coating fabric that I got. It has a nice drape to it. It's not super heavy, so I don't think that it's appropriate for like a full on winter coat, but it'll be nice for like late fall, early winter. The reason that I bought this fabric and this pattern is because I was inspired by a particular coat that I saw last year from Totem. It has a built in scarf and the simplicity pattern is basically a dupe for that designer coat, exactly. And so I really wanna recreate that because I just love the way that that coat looks. It looks so comfy and effortless and chic. And I can just see myself wearing it with like black trousers or black jeans. So if I can psych myself up to make a coat this year, I would really like to make this one. If not, there's always next year. This last fabric that I have to share with you is a bit of an impulse purchase. I bought it fairly recently from Emma One Sock, and unfortunately it has gone out of stock, so I do apologize for that, but it's an absolutely gorgeous fabric. This is what it looks like. So many colors, it's so bright and vibrant. And it's called Italian Cotton Blend Brushed Madras Plaid Coating in Vibrant Multi. I believe it's mostly cotton and then it has a little bit of polyester and it is brushed. So one side is super, super soft and the other side is more of like a regular flannel. And for the pattern, I'm a little bit undecided about what I wanna do with this one. Originally, I was thinking that I would make another shirt jacket pattern because I really like the style of the shirt jacket or the workwear jacket or the chore jacket or whatever we're calling it. To me, they're all very similar because they usually have a collar, they button down the front, and they often have patch pockets. So the pattern that I was thinking about making was the Logan Shacket from Style Arc. I bought this one fairly recently when they were having a sale. It comes in Australian sizes four to 30. And I do think the fabric would make a really fun Logan Shacket. The reason why I'm kind of second guessing myself is because I do have quite a few chore jackets or shirt jackets in my wardrobe already. And like I said, I do love that style and it works really well with my casual wardrobe. So maybe I should just stick with that. But I was also thinking maybe I should go for more of a traditional coat, more of like a simple design, but that it's lined. I don't have a ton of fabric. I'd probably have to do a coat that's around knee length regardless of the style of it. So let me know in the comments if you think I should go for the Logan jacket or if I should try something more like a traditional coat. All I know is that I need to find the perfect pattern for this fabric because it is so beautiful, it's so special, and I can just see myself wearing it in winter when it's really dreary outside and it's just making me feel cheery and happy. So whatever pattern I choose, I want it to be really special. Now on a personal note, I just want to thank everybody who's been so supportive and kind. In case you didn't know already, my dog Daisy had liver cancer and she has passed. Her body just deteriorated so quickly that we only had a few weeks with her after we got her diagnosis and it happened so much quicker than we were expecting. So it's been really difficult. My husband Jeff and I are doing about as well as can be expected and our other dog Penny she seemed really confused at first at not having Daisy around. But we're all coping the best that we can. And mainly, I just wanted to thank all of you who left really kind and supportive messages. I know that I didn't respond to people. Basically, I could only read a few comments at a time and then I would just start crying so I'd have to stop. But I do just want to say here that it meant a lot to me. And I know that I haven't met most of you in person, but I really do appreciate that there are people out there all over the world who've shown me such love and support. So I just wanted to say thank you and I'll see you in the next video.